Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to explain and expose all of the Hedgies dirty tricks that they've been using to continually drop the AMC price. And I also want to cover what I think could potentially be the final AMC game plan before the big squeeze. So stay tuned and let's make some money. But guys, before I dive into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to the 3,700 of you that have currently dinged that notification bell. And an even bigger shout out to all of the new apes that have just joined the Patreon and the private Discord and became part of the team. So if you guys want somewhere where you can relax, get urgent updates on AMC and be in with the chance of winning $600, be sure to join the Patreon and the private Discord linked in the description below. And as always, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss another video just like this one. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, amazing article that will help you to understand these price drops. One of my subscribers to my YouTube channel found this. Shout out to Pingmark, who is unable to post due to low karma. Read this if you want to understand why we see synthetic price failures, SPFs. It's what the hedge funds apply when the green is going to burn them to death. Due to potential virus and data loggers from the webpage, I'm directly posting the article here. Shout out to the author, Jerry Klein, for an excellent article. By the way, this article was written in 2014, so keep that in mind as it might be a little dated, but it's also outrageous that they're still using the exact same practices from 2014. Abusive shorting is not random acts of renegade hedge funds, but rather a coordinated business plan that is carried out by a collusive consortium of hedge funds and prime brokers, with help from their friends at the DTC and major clearing houses. Potential target companies are identified, analysed and prioritised. The attack is planned to the most minute detail. The plan consists of taking a large short position, then crushing the stock price and, if possible, putting the company into bankruptcy. Bankrupting the company is a short home run because they never have to buy real shares to cover and they don't pay taxes on the ill-gotten gains. When it's the time to drive the stock price down, a blitzkrieg is unleashed against the company by a cabal of short hedge funds and prime brokers. The playbook is very similar from attack to attack and the participating prime brokers and lead shorters are fairly consistent as well. Typical tactics include the following. Flooding the offer side of the board. Ultimately, the price of a stock is found at the balance point where supply, offer and demand bid for the shares find an equilibrium. So just a quick one to clarify, by flooding the offer side of the board, they mean flooding the supply, as in flooding supply of shares onto the market by either selling or by shorting the stock. This equation effectively happens every day for every stock traded. On days where more people want to buy than want to sell, the price goes up. And conversely, when shares offered for sale exceed the demand, the price goes down. The shorts manipulate the laws of supply and demand by flooding the offer side with counterfeit shares. They will then do what's called a short ladder attack. It works as follows. Short A will sell a counterfeit share at $10. Short B will purchase that counterfeit share covering a previously open short position. Short B will then sell that counterfeit share at $9 and short A will buy that share or short B will come down and hit short A's bid at $9. Short A then buys the share back for $9, covering his open $10 short and booking a $1 profit. But obviously on the flip side, short B takes a $1 loss as they bought the share for $10 and then sold it back for $9. So effectively it's still a break even there as the shares just go back and forth. By repeating this process, the shorts can put the stock price in a downward spiral. If there happens to be significant long buying, then the shorts draw from their reserve of strategic fails to deliver and flood the market with an avalanche of counterfeit shares that overwhelm the buy side demand. Attack days routinely see 80% or more of the shares offered for sale as counterfeit or synthetic shares. Company news days are frequently attack days as well, since the news will mask the extraordinarily high volume. It doesn't matter whether it's good news or bad news. And that's exactly what happened the other day when AMC released their earnings. We saw massive amounts of volume, presumably from the earnings, but most likely from counterfeit shares or synthetic shares. Flooding the market with shares requires foot soldiers to swamp the market with counterfeit shares. An offshore hedge fund devises a remarkably effective incentive program to motivate the traders at certain broker dealers. Each trader was given a debit card to a bank account that only he could access. The trader's performance was tallied and based upon the number of shares moved and the other success parameters, the hedge fund would wire money into the bank account daily. At the end of each day, the trader went to an ATM and drew out their bribe 
instant gratification. Now obviously I can't confirm the legitimacy of this part or the legitimacy of any of this article really. I don't know where this article comes from and I wasn't there firsthand to witness it. I don't know if this is actually something that happened in the past where a trader was bribed and paid via an offshore bank account. I'm not 100% sure, but let's go with it anyway. Global Links Corporation is an example of how wholesale counterfeiting of shares will decimate a company's stock price. And in the very next sentence, there we go, it's answered which company it's talking about. Global Links is a company that provides computer services to the real estate industry. By early 2005, their stock price had dropped to a fraction of a cent. At that point, an investor, Robert Simpson, purchased 100% of Global Links' 1.1 million issued and outstanding shares. He immediately took delivery of his shares and filed the appropriate forms with the SEC, disclosing he owned all of the company's stock. His total investment was $5,205. The share price was 0 0.00434. The day he acquired all of the company's shares, the volume on the OTC market was 37 million shares. 37 million daily volume seems rather high for a company with only 1.1 million issued share capital. The following day saw 22 million shares change hands, all without Simpson trading a single share. It is possible that the SEC had been conducting a secret investigation, but that would be difficult without the company's involvement. It's more likely the SEC had not done anything about this fraud. Massive counterfeiting can drive down the stock price in a matter of hours on extremely high or low volume. This is called crashing the stock, and a successful crash is a one-day drop of 20% or a 35% drop in a week. In order to make the crash stick or make it more effective, it's done concurrently with all or most of the following tactics. Media assault. The shorts, in order to realise their profit, must ultimately put the victim into bankruptcy or obtain shares at a much cheaper price than what they shorted at. These shares come from the investing public who panics and sells into the manipulation. Panic is induced with assistance from the financial media. The shorts have friendly reporters with the Dow Jones News Agency, the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, the New York Times, Gannetta Publications, USA Today and the Arizona Republic, CNBC and more. The common thread, a number of the friendly reporters worked for the street.com, an internet advisory service that short hedge fund manager David Rocker and Jim Cramer owned. This alumni association supported the short attack by producing slanted, libellious, innuendo-laden stories that disbraged the company as it was being crashed. One of the more outrageous stories was a front-page story in USA Today during a short crash of Taser's stock price in June 2005. The story was almost a full page, and the reporter concluded that Taser's electric jolt was the same as an electric chair, proof positive that Taser's did indeed kill innocent people. To reach that conclusion, the reporter overestimated the taser's amperage by a factor of one million times. This mistake was made despite a detailed technical briefing by taser to seven USA Today editors two weeks prior to the story. The explanation due to a mathematical error appeared three days later after the damage was already done to the stock price and taser's stock price had been crushed. Jim Cramer, in a videotaped interview with thestreet.com, best described the media function and I'm pretty sure I've shown this interview of Jim Cramer on the street before on my channel. When shorting, the hedge fund mode is not to do anything remotely truthful, because the truth is so against your view, so the hedge funds create a new truth that is development of the fiction. You hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders, a short down ladder attack that pushes the price down, then we go to the press. You have a vicious clean cycle down, and it's a pretty good game. This interview, which is more like a confession, was never supposed to get on the air. However, it somehow ended up on YouTube. Kramer and TheStreet.com have made repeated efforts with some success to get it taken off of YouTube. Another technique, analyst reports. Some alleged independent analysts were actually paid by the shorts to write slanted negative rating reports. The reports which were represented as being independent were ghostwritten by the shorts and disseminated to coincide with a short attack. There is congressional testimony in the matter of Gradient Analytic and Rocker Partners that expands upon this. These libellious reports would then become a story in the aforementioned friendly media. All were designed to panic small investors into selling their stock into the manipulation at a much cheaper and lower price. Planting moles in target companies. The short plants moles inside target companies. These moles can be as high as directors or as low as janitors. They steal confidential information, which is fed to the shorts who may feed it to the friendly media. The information may not be true, may be out of context, or the stolen documents may be altered. 
things that are supposed to be confidential, like SEC preliminary inquiries, end up as front page news with the short friendly media. Frivolous SEC investigations. The shorts leak tips to the SEC about corporate malfeasance by the target company. The SEC, which can take months processing Freedom of Information Act requests, swoop in as the supposed confidential inquiry is leaked to the short media. The plethora of corporate rules means the SEC may ultimately find minor transgressions or there may be no findings whatsoever. Occasionally they do uncover an Enron, but the initial leak can be counted on to drive the stock price down by 25% at least. The announcement of no or little findings comes months later, but by then the damage that has been to the stock price is irreversible. The San Francisco offices at the SEC appears to be particularly close to the short community. Class action lawsuits. Based upon leaked stories of SEC investigations or other media exposés, a handful of law firms immediately file class action shareholder lawsuits. Milberg Vice, before they were disbanded as a result of a Justice Department investigation, could be counted on to file a class action suit against the company that was under short attack. And you see this all the time with growth stocks. When a growth stock drops 25-30% to in a day after a short report is released, you see 10-15 to law firms all jumping on the bandwagon and starting a class action lawsuit. Again, it's just used to scare investors into selling their shares. Allegations of accounting improprieties that were made in the complaint would be reported as being the truth by short friendly media, again causing panic among small investors. Interfering with target companies' customers, financings and more. If the shorts became aware of clients, customers or financings that the target company was working on, they would call and tell lies or otherwise attempt to persuade the customer to abandon the transaction. Allegedly, the shorts have gone as far as to bribe public officials to dissuade them from using a company's product, pulling margin from long customers. The clearing houses and broker dealers who finance margin accounts will suddenly pull all long margin availability, citing very transparent reasons for the abrupt change in lending policy. Bearing in mind, this is a 2014 article that's explaining exactly what Robin Hood did and exactly what most large brokers did by restricting the margin availability on AMC, GameStop, and a bunch of other meme stocks. This causes a flood of margin selling, which further drives down the stock price and gets the shorts the cheap long shares they need to cover. Paid bashers. The shorts will hire paid bashers who invade the message boards of the company. The bashers disguise themselves as legitimate investors and try to persuade or panic small investors into selling into the manipulation. Again, a 2014 article perfectly explaining all of the paid bots and shills on Reddit and in the YouTube comments. This is not every trick the shorts use when they're crashing the stock, although almost every victim company experiences most or all of these tactics. How pervasive is this? At any given point in time, more than 100 emerging companies are under attack as described above. This is not to be confused with the day-to-day -day shorting that occurs in virtually every stock, which is purportedly about 30% of the daily volume. The success rate for short attacks is over 90% a success being defined as putting the company into bankruptcy or driving the stock price to pennies. It's estimated that a thousand small companies have been put out of business by the shorts. Admittedly, not every small company deserves to succeed, but they do deserve a level playing field. The secrecy that surrounds the shorts, the prime brokers, the DTC and the regulatory agencies makes it impossible to accurately estimate how much money has been stolen from the investing public. I also wanted to go over another tactic that shorts commonly use, which is order spoofing. So shorts are using 25k blocks to bring down price action today in AMC. They short it, then use 25,000 shares as a wall for resistance till the price falls again. Rinse and repeat. Shake my head, nobody is selling off of their earnings cool. And this is exactly what I mean. So this is the level 2 data for AMC that shows all of the bid orders in the $35 and $60 and all of the ask orders in the $36. And here you can see there's a giant wall of 25,000 shares that makes it look like there's a huge amount of selling pressure and that the bulls are losing and therefore the price goes down. People might start chipping into this giant wall trying to push the price back over $36 but then they'll just short more shares bringing it back down to below 35. If there's a giant whale that comes in and tries to buy up these 25,000 shares in order to push the share price back over $36, the hedge funds quickly retract their order so that no shares can be bought. Maybe the whale then decides not to buy any shares and redacts their order as well, and the hedge fund puts the wall straight back up again in order to scare the retail investors and suggest that there's massive, massive selling pressure. 
Next up, I'm sure you recognize this guy. His name's Andrew Sorkin, who works for CNBC, and Melissa Lee put him in his place the other day. This is Andrew Sorkin, the guy giving Adam Aaron a hard time on CNBC this morning after record earnings. Ken was also at his wedding. It's one big clown show out there. The media has zero honor. Remember that. So not only does Andrew work for CNBC, and he's obviously been trying to speak down on AMC for a long time now, but interestingly enough, Ken Griffin actually went to the guy's wedding. No wonder why he doesn't like AMC. And finally, I wanted to talk to you about the potential final game plan for AMC and GameStop. Remember the big short. Everyone knew what was going on. Literally everyone was in on it. Remember what actually allowed Dr. Mike Burry to cash in. It wasn't until banks established similar short positions that they allowed the CDO ratings to tank and to mark the swaps properly. Until then, everyone was complicit. It's shady and manipulative, but that's what allowed them to actually get paid. All of this institution buying is great in my opinion, because history has a way of repeating itself, except this time it will be the 99% that wins. I'm holding for the families I saw left with their stuff on the curbs, and the 70 year old man who had to go back to work because rich guys were careless with their retirement. Time for them to look at things from the other side of the fence. Therefore, it wouldn't surprise me if one or two major players managed to establish a net long position on AMC and then allow the AMC stock to squeeze to new highs. Guys, if you didn't already know, I'm no longer using Webull as my main stock trading platform. I'm now using Moomoo. Moomoo have super up-to-date news on AMC and all other companies. They also have an earnings calendar, so you can find out which companies have upcoming earnings, and they have the option chain as well. So guys, if you do want to sign up for Moomoo, be sure to use my link in the description below to get four free shares worth up to $3,350. And if you're from the UK, be sure to sign up to Free Trade to get a free share worth up to £200. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.